Dan, welcome back to Meadow Lane. You've had a, is it about a couple of weeks now to settle back in? Just talk us through the move back here. Yeah, so um, four and a half years away, um, three and a half spent in Norway. So yeah, moving back here wasn't so straightforward in terms of logistically, but um, for me to come back here was really important. And yeah, I've really enjoyed my first two weeks in the job and just looking forward to moving things forward and um, make as much impact as I can on the young players. Presumably over this initial fortnight back at, back at Meadow Lane, you've been kind of just taking a general view of where the academy is. Um, obviously there's various strands and various performance sort of metrics, I guess you can look at in judging the success of an academy, but generally what sort of uh, state do you think the academy is in at the minute? Um, I think the guys have done a really good job to handle the situation of losing the, the Football League funding and Cat 3 status especially. Um, there's been a lot of support from parents as well, obviously helping to keep the programme going. Um, but you know, hats off to, to Craig, to Bunny, to Phil, to Gav and all the other coaches in the academy that they've continued to offer a good programme for the boys, um, which I know must have been really difficult. Um, so yeah, so now it's just taking in, observing, um, supporting people where I can and kind of plan for um, what we can do for next year. The board obviously have recognised the importance of the academy and the significance it has to, to many of our supporters. Um, but obviously the antithesis to that, I suppose, is the challenge of keeping it going without that, that funding. Just explain to the supporters what sort of a challenge that is and, and how they can potentially help. Yeah, I think in terms of uh, an academy budget, we're obviously without almost half a million pounds of EFL funding if you go back into Cat 3. Um, so it's a lot of money to, to find elsewhere. but. What I've noticed straight away coming back and when I came to meet um, Jason and Richard in the past it was that there was a real backing for the academy to, to continue to be a success and that young players should be a real big part of the future of the club um, which was really important for me to, to know that I was coming back into a job that is going to be really worth doing. Um, and yeah, in terms of finding this, the funding solutions now, obviously we do what we can to try and generate as much income as we can from, from various different places. Um, the parents will continue to support that. Um, the Supporters Association have been really supportive as they always have been, um, even the time when I was back here before and they were buying equipment for us and things, but they've really contributed this year with um, you know, their continued efforts on match days and putting on events and golf days, uh, the Abba night coming up this Friday. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's lots of different ways of, of us um, generating more income and some things that we're looking to get in place for next year that could hopefully ease the pressures a little bit on everybody. We're obviously coming towards the end of the football season. Just give us an insight into how the younger age groups have got on performance-wise this year. Yeah, I've had a, a good chance to see on some video. Obviously, when I wasn't here, when I knew I was coming back, I managed to see a little bit of the under-19s and um, Gavin shared some videos from the younger age groups. Um, and just having a look on the, the training sessions and the games while I've been back, that. The academy is performing to a really good level, um, probably better than you'd anticipate with the, the players that they had lost uh, to other local clubs. Um, but yeah, the Craig especially and Bunny have been really pleased with the performance of the under-19s and you know, really trying to put in place similar ways of playing that the first team are doing, which we know is a really attractive way of playing and, and watching football. One of the big challenges I think for the academy last season was obviously with our the first team's participation in the playoffs and that loss of the funding, it was very difficult to actually recruit for the, the fresh batch of under-19s this year. Is that going to be a different story this year now there's a bit more time to plan and, and to try and hopefully recruit some, some more players? Yeah, I mean what we've done, we've had a partnership with Nottingham College, um, which was in place last year, but I think was a little bit of a late um, kind of partnership because of the situation in the playoffs. and. What we've been able to do now is run trials for the under-19s group. Um, so we'll be in a position where we'll be probably running three different teams at under-19s next year, um, giving players an opportunity to play at different levels, um, but also giving those with a, maybe a little bit of a longer development pathway a little bit more time. Um, so it's a really important, again, partnership and funding stream with the college. Um, but what it gives us, like I said, is that opportunity to give more people an opportunity. Um, obviously there's boys out there that are looking for scholarships at clubs and. We hope one day that's something we can offer again, um, but it's really important as well that we have a pathway. I think that's going to be some of the developments that we work with, with the manager and with um, the directors, that we have a pathway for young players here. Um, so people can come here for an opportunity. Um, it's not necessarily then about the scholarship contract or about the money, it's about what we can offer them as coaches and as a football club. Um, and I think to be fair to Craig and, and Bunny especially, the players they brought in 
this year have had a really good impact and we've seen you know, young players like Luther uh, stepping up and training with the first team, having a taste out on loan. Um, and another young boy now, Gio, training with the first team regularly this week. So um, I think it's important that we, like I say, we keep that pathway alive and show people that there is a way to get through to professional football. Interesting what you say there about three separate teams representing the under-19s. Would that be under the under-19s first team umbrella or would there be three separate teams operating in three different leagues? Or um, it's, It would be quite, quite fluid because what we want to make sure is that everybody has the opportunity to play at their, their level. So if they're progressing, then there's a chance for them to move up through the, the three teams that we have. Um, and also at the, the top end there that we have a kind of a mixed opportunity for like under 23 or sort of B team games. Um, so if there's first team players that need, need minutes, then we can support um, Ian and the rest of the team with some kind of transitional games as well. So um, these are all things that we're trying to plan together. And obviously we'll make some decisions in the coming weeks to see how that looks. You obviously mentioned Ian and trying to replicate the first team style of play. Just how important will it be for you to develop the relationship that you've, you've already built with Ian over the first couple of weeks and, and make it a really strong one going forward into the long term? Yeah, it's really important. It's vital for the young players that they um, have an easier transition. So I think our relationship with, with them and, and my relationship with Ian and, and Michael especially is, is really important. And, I've spent a lot of time these last couple of weeks just trying to get to know everybody around the first team set up um, because it's not just <clears throat> those guys that have interaction with the players, it's the, the physio staff, the sports science. Um, so I think it's really important that we have a, like a really cohesive like, environment and if a player is within the 19s, if he goes to train with them, that it's not a shock um, and that we can get them prepared as much as possible, playing style wise, periodization wise, um, and hopefully get them to a physical point where it's not a shock for a 16, 17 year old boy to go and have to play up against those big guys in the first team. Absolutely. Obviously there are a number of challenges of running an academy outside of the EFL sort of umbrella. Um, cynical people might say that it's, it's an exercise which is sort of uh, going to be very difficult to, to deliver success from. What would you say um, are the hopes that fans can potentially have for seeing uh, a young player come through our academy in the next year or two and potentially break into the first team? I think it's commitment to long-term player development is really important that it's not going to be very often that we get a key on that's going to be physically and emotionally and, and football ready at, at 17 to go and play first team football. Um, we hope we get players of his calibre again that, that do make that step. Um, but I think what's really important for us is that we take the pressure off and that we give these boys time to develop. Um, most of them won't be physically developed until into their early 20s. Um, so to expect them to perform straight away is um, not something that we want to do. And hopefully what we can do is give them, a, like I said before, a pathway and a development opportunity, whether that's being with us playing games here or going tasting men's football at a lower level out on loan. You know, we'll try and make the best decision for each player. Um, but we hope that there's some exciting talents in there that can make that breakthrough at some point and um, there's nothing better for me than seeing a young lad warming up on the side of the pitch in a first team game you know, as an academy coach or an academy manager. That's what it's all about, it's giving those boys that opportunity. Um, and we've had that a lot in the past with players making the bench and making their debuts. Um, the key for me now is keeping the longevity of those boys. So we don't see Colby Bishop playing at a high level, Luther Wilden playing at a high level, and that we really have a plan in place <clears throat> to keep these boys and give them the pathway here. Um, and perhaps you know, later down the line, we have a good potential sell on value for them as well. We have a number of supporters, don't we, that week in, week out are there to, to watch the boys, to travel in home and away, to, to keep track of their progress. How big a part of your role will it be to obviously pick up the relationships I'm sure you've got with many of those people already but to to continue to engage with them and and to um, give them as much sort of insight into into what's going on at the academy as possible. Yeah I think it's, it's vital for us to have some engagement not just with fans but with the local community as well and um, we're obviously starting to do a little bit more on social media try and get more information out there so people know what we're doing um, it's also some initiatives that we want to do to help out local grassroots, especially around the stadium, the, you know, the areas around the stadium where there's people playing football and young coaches as well that maybe need our support. Um, and that's something we're looking to do um, in sort of cooperation with the local FA um, to give young coaches opportunities to come and work with us and, and develop as well. 
Um, but the fans, the guys that are going down and watching the youth team every week, you know, hats off to them. It's really important, you know, I know Craig's <laughs> really enjoys having the, the contact with them before the games and it's good for the players as well to know that people are interested and um, whether it's 10 people that go down or if we have a youth cup game here and we get 100 people, it's, um, it all adds to a little bit more of an atmosphere and um, maybe some different pressures for the boys as well. Like Ian, you've obviously come here following a spell in Scandinavia, um, quite a forward thinking footballing sort of landscape, isn't it, out there? What, what key things do you think you've learnt in your time out there which you're going to bring into this role? Um, it's been interesting for me, obviously working in a, a country that speaks a different language, number one, but knowing that football is a universal language and that um, English especially made it a, a really easy transition. Um, <clears throat> and it's, yeah, Norwegian footballs are really developing quite rapidly and the time that I was there you can see the, obviously the rise of Buda Glimt in Europe and getting there and beating Roma. Um, it's that kind of knowing that if you're a small club um, that you can achieve big things and I think it's really important that young players and the players that we have here, you know, you know they're in a, a smaller club in, in a lower division that there's a, <clears throat> an opportunity for them to really have a good career in football. Um, and there's things around recruitment, um, especially in the north of Norway where we've been where we only had 50,000 people that lived in the town and we had to recruit from an area that was a 12 hour drive from one end to the other. Um, so I think it's given me some good experience of how to, to think about recruitment a little bit differently, which I think is really important for a club like us that's um, got Forest, Derby, Leicester, Burton, Chesterfield, Sheffield, uh, all on our doorstep, um, that we can try and be the academy of choice for people that want to do something a little bit different. Um, so that'll be something I'll be definitely taking from my time there as well. Finally, we're going obviously into the summer now, but medium, long-term aims looking ahead? Um, obviously getting our financial plan ready for next year to make sure that we can operate at a really high level is really important um, to make sure that we can keep um, operating as a professional uh, academy um, without our Cat 3 status and I want us to still be in a good, a good position where we can offer a very similar programme. Um, it's worth mentioning Gavin as well, the games programme he's put in for the younger players this year has been unbelievable playing Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 3 teams, probably giving us a better programme than what we've had in the past. Um, so yeah, a lot of the planning now will be making sure that that work continues um, and making sure that we have a good football programme that, like I said before, mirrors the first team but has some synergy all the way through from, from under 8s all the way through to the under 19s. Um, and I guess long term it's continuing to build that programme and making it the best it possibly can be to give the boys the best experience they can have here.